Do you feel overwhelmed by the daily tasks needed to run a small business? If you are, and you're not using ChatGPT to its full potential, you're missing out. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to use ChatGPT in the most common use cases that there is in a small business to maximize your output, get more things done, and focus on the things that really matter. So let's get right into it. So one area that ChatGPT can really excel in is content creation. And this is the first thing that we'll get into in this video. So here I am in ChatGPT using GPT-4. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT to brainstorm a few ideas about a specific subject. So give me 10 ideas of content I can create about how to build a PC. Let's start with this. Once I have these ideas ready, I can ask ChatGPT to write about any of them. And I'm going to show you how to adjust the writing of ChatGPT to create content that is valuable, not just the random fluff that comes out of ChatGPT when you don't specify specific things. So let's see. So here we have number four, PC build challenges. Host a challenge where you build a PC under various constraints, such as time limits, limited budget, or using secondhand parts only. Document the process and the outcomes. Pretty good. So let's say that I want to create three paragraphs on this. This is the key. I want you to use language that varies in brevity and perplexity. Use conversational tone and write in a way that a grade level six student would understand you. Use sentences of varying lengths. No more and then one to two sentences per paragraph. So let's see what comes out when I paste that in. And ChatGPT said, think about how fun it would be to build a computer like it's a race. You could set a timer and see how fast you could put all the parts together. It's like a puzzle where each piece needs to fit just right. And the clock is ticking. Or maybe you try to build a computer without spending too much money. You could use parts that aren't brand new, but still work well. It's like a treasure, it's like treasure hunting where you find the best pieces for the least money. Another cool idea is to use parts that someone else didn't want. Imagine making a great computer out of things that were left behind. It shows that even old parts can do amazing things if you give them a chance. Not too bad. So this is using ChatGPT for content writing to brainstorm ideas and to actually write the things themselves. And another thing that I will say is that you can also mimic a specific way or a specific tone of voice of someone. I can also say rewrite the above in the tone of voice of Sylv. I don't know why I just thought Sylvester Stallone. Can imagine something masculine. Imagine you're gearing up for a big showdown with science about building a PC fast. You set the clock ticking and race against time to snap those parts together. So it's about speed and precision, a real adrenaline rush. I think about doing it on the cheap, like a real underdog story. Nice reference there. Use parts that aren't fresh off the shell, but still pack a punch. It's like digging for buried treasure, finding the best gear without breaking the bank. And here's a twist, build a rig using only the stuff that others tossed aside. Picture turning leftovers into a powerhouse. So there's a lot of language that indicates that um, kind of tone of voice. It proves that even underdogs can have their day, making something awesome from the forgotten. So I like how that combined the two aspects together. And speaking of this, one thing that you could do is actually combine the two stories. Just something that I just thought about right now. So, for example, if I said, use the story of Rocky, played by Stallone, to come up with a story that then um, integrates with your output about. Come with a story about an underdog. That can and that can that then integrates with your other. Let's say a story about Rocky, but this time it's on the boxing ring. It's a computer desk. It's a Rocky, the quintessential underdog, but instead of throwing punches, he's piecing together a PC. His challenge to build the best computer possible using only parts that others have tossed aside. Like his gritty fights in the dimly lit gyms of Philadelphia, Rocky approaches the challenge with determination. His budget almost non existent. His resources just a pile of second hand parts that everyone else has given up on. The crowd Skeptical onlookers who doubt they can make anything worthwhile from such scripts. So pretty interesting how ChatGPT has combined these two things from nothing. 
So I find that quite interesting. All right, awesome. So that's the first use case, which is content creation. Let's now speak about email management. And this is an interesting one as well, because when it comes to email, many of us are still doing it the old way. We get an email, we read it, we think of whatever we're going to say in our head, then we try and type it out, we go back, we edit. There's a lot of back and forth moving parts. What if you could use ChatGPT to automate like many parts of that? And this is what I'm going to show you in this next section. So you can use ChatGPT for response automation. Let's say that someone sent me an email asking how I can, how they can use secondhand parts to build a PC. They're frustrated because they followed my advice and Tim's blew up in their face. Um, yeah, let's see if it had that. It's very general in a way. And ChatGPT said, Hi, name. I'm really sorry to hear about the trouble that you run into with your PC build. Building the second hand parts or building with second hand parts can definitely have its hiccups. And I appreciate you reaching out for some guidance. Let's see if we can tackle this together. First off, it's important to ensure that all the parts are compatible with each other. You let me know which parts you use to help us figure out if there is a compatibility issue or if the specific part may have caused the problem. So, pretty, very good tone. Apologetic, very helpful. What kind of tone did you use in the output above? Let's see. So this is another thing. You can also ask ChatGPT for specific tones. In this case, they were supportive, understanding, and encouraging. And then either use this similar format to create other types of content or even change out the tones that ChatGPT uses to provide a response that better suits your needs. So in terms of email management, you can also use ChatGPT to draft replies. In this case, I gave a more generic response. But what if I say, use a tone that's more authoritative to give more specific advice about building a custom PC? I want the advice to use the latest parts one can find in second hand markets. And I'm doing this on the fly, so let's see what ChatGPT will comes up with. So now we're more authoritative. I understand the issues you've encountered and this is crucial we address these with Pranex always verify. So there's a sequence to it. It's very authoritative. There's a specific sense of this is how things should be done which is what you would want to hear if you're someone facing difficulties, right? Another thing to think about is that you can also set templates in ChatGPT, and I'm going to discuss this in one of the next sections where I speak about custom GPTs. So you can also provide ChatGPT with specific files that it can reference when it comes to giving specific responses. And when you do this, you'll have a knowledge base that this system, this platform can reference when providing its responses. So they will be more on point. The next thing in which ChatGPT is very useful is to create strategic business planning. Let's say you're doing some market research and you want to find pain points that an audience has. It's very easy to do with ChatGPT. So all you would do is say, I want to figure out what the biggest pain points of my market, people wanting to build second and or people wanting to build custom disease with second hand farts are facing. Let's see what comes out. So it's telling me how to actually do my research. However, okay. So for some reason, the whole recording stopped. So backtracking here, what actually happened is that this was saying how to actually do research. And then I said, provide me with the challenges these people face, I want specifics. And it said, people are facing compatibility issues, liability and lifespan, lack of warranties, difficulty in benchmarking. So it's giving me the challenges that people are facing, which means that I can create product solutions, offers based around this, if I'm a marketer working in this industry. Then I said, I want to create a checklist for smart goals where people overcome the above challenges. And it gave me the actual go smart goal checklist for the specific challenges. So for example, if I have a challenge with sorting part goals, I can have these smart goals, which include a specific acquire all necessary components, measurable, gather all the parts from the sellers, achievable, 
do the research on different platforms, relevant, ensure reliable sourcing um, that in, like, encompasses quality parts, time bound, completed within one month to keep the project timeline. So I'm also looking at different timelines and the different ways of ensuring I hit my goals. And then I said, how can I decrease my spending on secondhand parts? So I was speaking about specifics and this means that I want to know specific information. This came up with a list. So set a clear budget, do a price comparison, buy in bundles, negotiate prices, which are all very valid points. Then I went into the next part, which is I want to learn skills. As a business owner, skills are what brings me forward. Skills are what drives my business and what will help me achieve more in my day to day. And I'm asking ChatGPT for specific input to help me with specific skills. So I say, I want to learn Python for beginners. Give me a list of topics I would need to get to know. And this came up with this whole introduction. Kind of, this could be a course in and of itself. So introduction to Python, basic control and all that. Now, this is not anything that's wow in and of itself because there are out of online courses that can help me with Python. But what is great is that I can customize my learning. So let's say that as part of my learning, I already learned about functions through learning another language and I'm not sure if it's the right thing for me to learn or relearn as part of learning Python. And I told ChatGPT about my concern and it said, given your background, you already have a good grasp of fundamental programming concepts. However, there are some specific nuances and differences to how Python functions work. And it listed the differences. So it allows me to go through this, use its input or its output and my expertise to see if learning functions is actually something I need to do as part of learning Python. Or if it's something that I can skip. So as not to waste my time. And then I can say, okay, another part of learning skills is knowing what I actually learned and testing myself along the way. So in this process, I can ask ChatGPT to come up with quizzes that will help me test my level of skills. And I said, let's go back to building custom PC. I did my research and learned a bunch about the topic. I want you to quiz me on the information that is needed to complete my first build. Provide me with 10 multiple choice questions. And after I provide the answers, I want you to grade my answers and then provide reasons for the questions I get that should be wrong. And it came up with a quiz made up of 10 questions about building a PC. So here, what I could do is write number one and give it a letter, number two, etc. And then at the end, it would, as it says, go ahead and provide your answers. When you're ready, I'll grade and explain any incorrect ones. So it's also my personal examiner to help me get better at this skill. Another way to improve skills is to actually do them or learn them within a specific time period. So going back to the learning Python example, I said, okay, I have to learn all this information in six weeks. Each week, I can dedicate three hours, create a six week program to help me learn the above. So now I'm creating not only a customized or the personalized course, I'm also asking ChatGPT to give me what I should learn in which week and specifically what to learn in these sessions. So week one, session one, production to Python, install it, basic syntax, and there's even practice. Week two, control structure and basic programs, functions and data structures. There's a whole six week program right there. And I'm just curious what will happen by the end of the six week program. So let's see, week six, cover advanced topics, discuss debugging and testing strategies, and use all the learned concepts to create more complex projects, such as a scraper as a small data analysis program using pandas. So there's the curriculum along with the timeline to learn it. And finally, another way to use ChatGPT to help you with running your business is through its ability to do real-time research. First of all, if you're gathering information, ChatGPT can help with this. It can give you real-life information and it can also provide references. However, when it comes to specific types of references, a tool that I also love using is called perplexity.ai, how to build a custom PC. And what I love about this, first of all, it will give you the answers in a chat kind of format. It will also give you images, you can reference right there. It can search videos, 
So if I click on that, it will take... So you've just video. bought all of the parts for your Which brand new game. It can generate an image immediately as well, something which ChatGPT can also do with an additional command. And one thing that it was able to do, which I'm not sure whether I now need to be on the pro version, is that it was able to tell me where I can search for information for. For example, there was Reddit, there was specific websites like Wikipedia. I'm not sure if that's the case anymore, but definitely something to look into. Another thing that you can use ChatGPT for when it comes to real-time analysis is getting information from different websites together. So let's say that I go back to my building a PC, so how to build a PC. And I'm going to open the first three pages that come up. I'm going to copy the information there. That's a long article. So information source one. Might be too much information, but let's see information source two. Let's copy that. And information source three. Initial source three. So I can tell ChatGPT instructions. Combine this information into a bullet form outline format to help me build a custom PC. Essentially what I'm asking it to do is combine three sources of information into one to make it easy for me to process and interpret that information. So if I go back past all the information that I inputted, it says here's a concise bullet point guide to help you build a custom PC combining the information from the source provided. So prepare your workspace, select your components, assembly. So essentially it's taking three different sources and combining them into one, which is pretty handy and pretty useful instead of having to do it all manually. And finally, one other thing I'll mention when it comes to analyzing real-time information is to analyze the sentiment of something online. For example, let's go to amazon.com, let's search for books, and let's look at one of these books. So, The Anxious Generation has a 4.7 rating. The majority are 5 stars, but some lower ratings as well. So, this is 5 star, 5, 4, 5. So, let's take this one, which is, I guess, in Germany. Interesting. So, let's make this more interesting. So, I'm going to open another chat window. I want you to analyze the below text and do the following. 1. Translate it to English. 2. Tell me the sentiment of the writer. Text. Paste. Let's see. So, translation. I bought the book, hoping to gain new insights into the problems of young people. The book offered no groundbreaking insight or innovative strategies. The book does offer interesting insights for readers who have not dealt with the topic much before. Sentiment expressed in the text seems to be mixed. Very well. The writer expressed a disappointment with the lack of groundbreaking insights and innovative strategies in the book, indicating a negative sentiment regarding their expectation. However, there is also a recognition with the book's value for a certain audience, like newcomers to the topic, which carries a more positive tone. Overall, the sentiment could be characterized as mildly negative or neutral, less familiar for those less familiar with the topic. Pretty good. So that's uh, another thing you could do, which is sentiment analysis. And finally, one other thing that I want to mention is creating custom GPTs. While I won't have the time to get into it in this video, all of this information that I went through in this video could actually be used as a knowledge base to allow ChatGPT to reference it each and every time you give it a command. So by creating these custom GPTs, you can, first of all, save yourself the time and effort of doing the same thing over and over again. And secondly, it will also help provide better outputs because ChatGPT will know what type of output you are expecting and model the new outputs based on that. So definitely try custom GPTs when you get the chance. All right, so in this video, we've gone through a lot of different case studies and use cases that you can use ChatGPT for. I hope you found the video useful. Go back to various sections if you need to, test it out yourself and find ways to use it in your business to get better and more quality work done. If you found the video useful, hit the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to check out the link in the description. I have a checklist to show you how to get started in your freelance journey. So check that out. And in the meantime, have a great rest of your day. I'll speak to you soon.